You guys have been an amazing support. And every one of you who has hit that subscribe button, thank you so much. I'm very grateful. And if a lot of you have watched a lot of my content and watch it regularly, and you haven't subscribed yet, now will be a fantastic time. Channel's growing really well. And it'd be much appreciated if you haven't hit that subscribe yet, go for it. Now, this video is gonna kind of be, start off with a brief recap, if I can make it brief. As you know me, I like to waffle. But it's gonna be a brief recap of how it all effectively started. Then I'm gonna do my top 10 watches I think have been interesting to me this year, up to a budget of 300 pounds. Do a brief sort of one minute-ish synopsis of each watch. Pictures will appear here, so you get an idea from many what they look like. All the watches I've reviewed, I've owned. Um, I have sold a lot of them on, so I can't just sort of show them again physically because I have to flip the watches to keep this channel funded. So, and then there'll be an overall uh, winner, if you will, of what I felt is the most interesting overall and why, the worst watch and a bonus contender. And that's gonna be it. And I'm not doing a giveaway. I would have liked to have done a giveaway before Christmas because I've got in mind what my giveaway is gonna be. It's actually gonna be a modded watch. And I'm missing the parts, unfortunately. They just still haven't come yet for me to complete this mod. So that'll be in the new year. Be a New Year's present, if you will, to you guys, one of you lucky subscribers, and that will come. So let's get cracking on with a, a brief summary of the year. This year, I started doing YouTube properly. I did a video ages ago, probably a year ago, but that's just like one video. Then during lockdown, I thought, let's get stuck in. I started making more videos, got in the swing of it, learned the software, learned YouTube, learned everything. I've started from scratch and in six months, here we are, 4,000 subscribers later. I was praying to get a thousand by Christmas, but here we are, I am blessed. And it shows if you have hard work and people appreciate and enjoy your content, just keep, keep doing it. Um, but in the meantime, I've also been working full time, which I'm very grateful for in these difficult times. And obviously I'll need to maintain that job. And I have a child and um, I am a husband. <laughs> and so I'm managing to try and juggle all these things, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And it, it, the year just flies by even more when you've got a hobby as time intensive as YouTube. And I also have set up a strap business, which is going extremely well. So all of you have already bought from me. I'm so grateful, thank you. And I hope you're enjoying your new straps. I have many more to come. Started off with about a hundred in stock and I'm approaching six to 700 straps in stock. That's how rapidly that's growing. And that's thanks to you guys. So there we are. There's been lots of little additions along the way in terms of we've we've gained Gi Pass, we've gained Minch, and we've gained some white gloves, a UV torch. And in the future, we'll be gaining a time grapher. I need to buy one of those, or it's on the way, and a diamond selector. So I can give you an even more broad collection of information about the watch. So you are as informed as possible, but also try and make it light, relaxing, entertaining at the same time. So I've talked now for three minutes that's effectively the summary of the year, and I'm very happy with how it's gone. So let's get stuck in with these watches because some of you are going to get bored. I've got my Great Wave of Kanagawa notepad. I'm going to try and do a minute per watch. And even if I did, it'd be a 13 minute video. But I won't rush it because it will I'll possibly miss some crucial and fun information. Now, all the notes are here, and I've got my festive t shirt on because it's appropriate for this end of year kind of video. So let's start before I waffle on too long. We've got the Felida. I really enjoyed this watch. It's the SE11 paying strong homage to the Amiga Seamaster No Time To Die edition, which is just from release, but that's a 7,000 pound watch. We want a decent watch or a lot less. So around hundred pounds, the Felida impressed me with the Seagull movement, not the Miyota, because that rattles like a child's toy with the rotor. I was very impressed with this watch. The overall fit and finish, the specification is great and there was no major flaws or anything of great concern. Slightly fiddly to adjust bracelet, but I got that to fit me comfortably. The um, the overall brushing and polishing is, is, is good for this price point. And they've started to introduce PT5000 movements, which is a Chinese clone of a Swiss movement. And that's creeping over a hundred pound bracket. But I would say it'd be good to stick to these homages to less than hundred pounds. These are very good. Silly name, but apparently they're working on that and that will be in the new year. So who knows, let's see. Second watch, we have a steel dive, the SD 1965. The reason why I've chosen this, because this is showing the evolution of steel dive quality control. 
they have rapidly improved as I've seen watches over the past six months progressively just seem to get better and better in terms of the quality of the bezel feel, how well the crown screws in, no glaring errors or faults, nothing too much of a compromise with its design. Yes, there's elements of blandness to them. There's not much interest in terms of uh, extra splash of color in the design. Obviously there are homages, all the watches, so they haven't got any individuality, but they're very good homage watches. They're very well made and they are improving greatly. And the prices are creeping slightly. They're all creeping over the £120 mark for the more premium and better finished models, which is effectively all the new releases. So for up to £150, you're getting a very well made watch with decent Japanese movement. Um, so I was impressed with the ST1965. It was a good homage to a Oris. Um, 1965. Third watch, the Vea S5 standard issue. Quartz watch with a movement, someone quote, the same movement the grandmother has on the clock on her wall in the kitchen or something like that. And I was thinking, either they've gone to the effort to go to their grandmother's house during these vulnerable times, not a good idea, to inspect her clock to see what movement's inside it. And for that, I commend you. And it must have a very small movement inside possibly a big clock so that would look quite funny so i would not worry about that in a watch though because it's a very accurate and reliable myota quartz movement in here but all the rest of it's fantastic the build quality fit and finish 150 dollars um is what it costs i was really blown away a little bit bland in its design but it's very very uh, good as an everyday wear watch which can be just grab and go and it's fine and it's water resistance 100 meters so you could slap it on a rubber or a nato strap and go in the sea and speaking of straps i sell both of those types of straps as well <laughs> so come and check them out uh, next the marathon general purpose quartz i love this watch because it's a genuine military spec watch yes over 200 pounds if you spend a bit more than what i spent i spent 175 and over 200, you have it with the tritium tubes, which have up to 20 years constant glow life span. Fantastic technology. It's not new technology, but I think on the Maraglow, it's um, Marathon's proprietary loom. On the hands, it's exquisite. It's extremely strong and bold and clear. On the indices, not so much, but very legible. But it's a genuine military spec watch. It's ultra light, really comfortable. You know it's going to be tough. And that interests me. And that's why I got it. And it's still in my collection. Next up, I borrowed from Mark from Long Island Watches. If he's watching this, grateful for that. Thank you so much. It was the Islander ISL 22. It's the 38 mil case size SKX 007 homage that he does, but it's effectively hugely updated, upgraded NH36 movement, day and date. It had um, sapphire crystal with AR coating, ceramic bezel, which was also loomed. Very good bracelet. It's very comfortable and it's $300. And I paid about £20 import tax from America, but it came via the Netherlands. So if anyone queries the tax and all that, sometimes it depends where the stock is held. It's not always coming from America. It could have been on loan to someone else in Europe. You know, as a review channel, because he said it was out on loan somewhere else. So that might explain that. But long story short, it's a fantastic all-rounder, and it's in my top three. Next up, we have my first ever watch, kindly gifted to me by my good friends at Watch Gecko. Now this could go to GO2 GMT Quartz with a Ronda Quartz movement. It's a fantastic, beautiful watch. And I was happy and proud to give it away as a giveaway prize. And that went to a lovely young man in Uruguay. And he's enjoying that watch as we speak. And that watch, I loved it because it had lots of lovely, intricate little details. Such as the eggshell dial, the black hands to contrast it, and then the orange GMT hand, dome sapphire crystal, beautiful feel to the bi-directional GMT bezel, which is traditional, what you should have on a GMT rotating bezel, all brush finished. The brushing was extremely smooth. It was a really good all rounder and I'm not bothered that it's quartz. I'm not one of these people that's bothered by quartz because I've got quite a few quartz watches in this, in this roundup really. I think we should not be snobby. Um, SD1970 is next. Another steel die for good reason. This is apparently the top seller in the UK from what I understand from Matt at Steel Dive UK. But that may have changed, but it's an extremely strong seller for good reason. It pays strong homage to the infamous Captain Willard watch that Seiko sell. And if you're to get one of those now, the reissue re-release a thousand pounds. This is only approximately a hundred pounds. 
and that is extremely good value for money with something with a Seiko movement, sapphire crystal, excellent loom, really good fit and finish, lovely bezel feel. Some people complain they're early, very earlier models. They had a few issues with bezel and things like that, but mine was spot on, perfect. And I actually miss it a little bit, but I had to sell it um, to help fund buying more watches to review for you guys. So that was a really good watch. Now we're moving on to a San Martin, paying strong homage to the 6105 uh, by Seiko. And this had a beautiful, beautiful dial. It's the Great Wave of Kanagawa, a famous art piece. If you haven't seen that video, I'd love it if you checked it out. I did it ages ago, but I talked a lot about the, the history behind the art and why it's incredibly uh, important in just general pop culture and art culture and how it links beautifully in with horology because it's to do with obviously the ocean, it's great on a dive watch. And I love that. And it's in striking colors and the loom they did. I mean, I had contact with Sam Martin. They talked a lot about how they just, they had 15 to 20 layers of loom impregnated in when they 3D printed the dial, which is exceptional. And it was mesmerizing. I was really excited about getting it. I was blown away when I had it. I really regret selling it. But again, I need to fund more watches for this channel. <laughs> but it had a great movement. The fit and finish was exquisite. A domed sapphire with, um, it was double domed, so you had a little bit of distortion. It was beautiful. It was immaculate. Not any quality control issues apart from ever so slightly fiddly crown to screw in, but that was it. A rubber waffle strap, which I sell as well, by the way. Um, quick release, uh, I must add as well, is what I sell. Uh, and blue and black, the bit of variation there. So it was a fun watch and it was a 200 meter dive watch but it had that gorgeous artistic dial. Very interesting. Now, moving on to the last few, where we get into the, the final parts of this video. Now we've got the Pagani Daytona homage, homage to the Rolex Daytona. It's actually called the PD1644 Chronograph Sport. <coughs> Excuse me, these vary in price, but you can get these for 50 pounds to 60 pounds all day long. Sometimes people have been unbelievably good and shrewd to match them for 45. It's quite hard to find them that cheap, but what do you get for your money? So on this solid stainless steel case, sapphire crystal, um, you get ceramic bezel with the tachymeter re uh, readings on it. You have a Seiko mecha quartz movement with a smooth sweep, lovely feel to the pushes, which are screwed down. It's hundred meters water resist. It's slim. It's light. It's popular for good reason. It's a fantastic all rounder sports watch. And I highly rate that. So, we're going to move on to another really good value watch. My value for money watch of the year, which is the Callaton C1032. Black sunburst or silver sunburst style NH36 movement, high polished case and bracelet, bit of a strap monster, 20 mil lug, so it's easy to slap any strap on, buy from me on there. And it just looks beautiful. It's so, so universal and you can, you can make it more casual or you can make it really dressy. I think it's a really good all-rounder. Yes, it doesn't have the water resistance of a sports watch, but for day-to-day -day use, light use, it's fantastic. And the price of approximately 40 pounds is extraordinary. And I think everyone should have one in their collection. Now, start with the worst, then we'll have a bonus mention, and then we'll finish with what was my best and why. So the worst, I haven't even reviewed it for you guys yet because I can't bring myself to do it. I'm, I'm I'm thinking of how I can review it in a tasteful, professional way without it just being a rant video. But effectively, it's a Starking AM0088. I made a big mistake buying this watch because it's hideous in every way. Uh, the movements were unrefined and, and noisy. It's the, pit, the finishing of the case. The bracelet is awful. It's ugly. I, I didn't buy it for this reason, just to, to slate it. I thought it looked all right, but it's awful. Now the, the bonus mention has to be the recently reviewed Corju Railmaster homage. The Corju is mind blowing for £58. I said in the video, it was my first impressions, but I was really thorough because I was very impressed with the overall fit and finish. It was extremely good. I, you'll see, just check the video out. You'll see how thorough I've been. It's, it's comfortable. I got it to fit me perfectly. All well, the brushing is really good on it. There's no, no noticeable, obvious you know, deal breaker flaws on it that are going to put you off. And a lot of people in the comments have said they've been very happy with theirs, especially with the Seagull movement. I will be in the future when I get my time graph, I'll be able to give readings for how good these movements are, fresh out of the box, new in the watches. But 
I've not heard any horror stories for these seagull movements, to be honest. Nor the myotas. But people always complain about how unrefined and noisy the rotor is on the myotas. So often, for these ultra good value watches, get the Chinese movement. I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's not worth spending another 10 to $20 for a movement which is very similar. So now we're on to the final decision. I did struggle with this one, actually. I was stuck between two or three. But the way I made my final decision on what is my personal favorite watch of the year for less than 300 pounds was based on how excited I was to get it, how interesting it was, how many people I could tell the story about that watch to who normally aren't into watches. They were captivated by it as well. So I could share the hobby with others. And I've sold it on and I miss it. What is it? The San Martin with a great wave off Kanagawa dial because the dial is everything to me. I know you can get that dial on other watches, but I just loved everything else about the design, the fit and the feel, the comfort of the watch. It was, it was fantastic. And I miss it. I actually think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy another one. And they do it with NH36 movement. How would the day and the date I'm going to get that one? And that's why I've chosen it, because it was the most captivating and interesting watch to me. And it's entirely subjective because objectively all these watches are great they do some fluctuate a little bit in quality but they're still great for the amount you pay for any of these watches the quality of the piece correlates very well with the price and the san martin now i can get it quicker because it's available in a, a european warehouse for about 175 pounds so happy days i just need to sell some more straps so i can buy uh buy another one <laughs> that's it guys that has been my summary of my top 10 watches of this year i hope you've been enjoying my content so far if you have and you haven't subscribed yet you must hit that subscribe button you've got plenty more stuff to see next year is going to be a big one i've got lots of plans i'm going to be investing more into the business more into the youtube all whilst trying to keep my job and not scare my wife away so it's going to be a busy year. But in the meantime, thanks so much for watching, supporting me. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.